G'day fellas and a welcome to a casted game. We are here on Cliffside, a high octane map that is going to take us on a journey as two of the world's best players battle it out against each other. We've got a rank number one up against a rank number nine. Ladies and gentlemen, our players for today. Sporting in on the north side of the map in the color red, playing as the Byzantines. It's Balu. I tell you what, I kind of wish you'd played blue because then you'd have... Balu in the blue on the Byzantines, but anyway. On the south side of the map, in the color purple, playing as the Chinese, we've got Baldimus Maximus, aka Demu. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cliffside. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you go on and hit that like button. It really helps out with the traction of the videos. Thank you, because if I don't remind you, I know you won't do it. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into it. So we got ourselves a fun matchup. Two civilizations that absolutely excel in the late game, but... Hold your horses. Just because we talk about the late game doesn't always mean that we go and play the late game. These two players both are notoriously aggressive. Ultimus Maximus, aka Demo in particular. A very aggressive player, but at the same time, a player that is very competent when it comes to macro. Now, currently on the ladder, Demo is ranked number one. He's up against Balu, who is about ranked number nine or ten at the moment. There's a couple of Smurfs in there, so... You know, when like Puppy Paw has got two accounts in there and Wham's got two accounts and Vortex has got two accounts, you can't really say that, you know, that they are, you know, that, that, that rank number 12 is not really rank number nine. Um, I mean, it, it depends which side of the coin you're on though, right? But if it, by the same token, if you've got like 10 accounts and they're all in the top 10, then you could say, I've got 10 accounts in the top 10. Because uh, I know that in AoE 2, there's a player by the name of MBL and that's what he actually does. Like... He, he, he's he's impressive. I'll say that much. He's a he's a ladder hero. <laughs> he is a hero of the ladder, and he just gets accounts and he just puts them into the top ten, and then he just leaves them there, and then he's like, all right, I got to get that one up, got to get that one up. I'm impressed. I wish I I wish I had the the strength, the the skill, and uh, most importantly, the drive to do that because. <laughs> That's a lot of drive that you need to do that. All right, well, let's check in on the north side. We've got landmarks beginning to come down. We've got a very early landmark here from Balu. Two minutes 20 going down, about the earliest you'll see. It's actually a little bit before that. I think about 218, 219. So really, really nice opening here from Balu. And beautiful connection that he's got here with the berries. A lot of people look at this and think, that's eh, not that important. You know, I'll just throw it down next to the town center. No. You want to try and maximize how many berries are initially as close as possible to this landmark. And the reason why is your drop-off distance. So with your berries, unlike your sheep, and we can see that right here, when the villagers hand in their sheep, they very quickly just get up, hand it in, and then they get on back down to the ground. With berries, it's a little bit different because you've got walking that's involved. You're going to have to walk from here over to the edge of this landmark, hand in, and then walk back. The problem is... Once you've exhausted that first line of berries, then you're onto the second row. So if you've gone ahead and put your Grand Winery right here, you've only got one berry that's immediately adjacent to your Grand Winery. So one of the things you always want to do is try and maximize how much surface area you've got. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you go and put your landmark down here because then all of a sudden it's quite exposed. So I guess Baloo's also got a pretty decent spawn in that regard. Let's check in on the south side of the map as the first Chinese landmark has gone down. Expect to see a second one shortly. And have a look at this. What a beautiful position he's got here in the middle of the map. The Barbican of the Sun sits quite happily on this hill. Beautiful little spot that he's got, isn't it? You know, I think Ed Sheeran wrote a song about this, didn't he? Nah, we'll have to sing it later. Anyway, on the north side though, Balu about to age up. There you go. Three minutes and 51 seconds. Have a look at the timing on that age up and immediately throws down a house. Of, of all things, Balu, he throws down a house. But expect... Well, what are we going to see here? It looks like we might have a little bit of feudal action coming in. Mm -hmm. He's got quite a bit of gold, so that's going to be a wheelbarrow. Uh, expect to see a lumber camp thrown in, probably double broad axe after that. Now, one of the other things to note is he hasn't thrown down production at this point. There's the, there's the lumber camp. There's the second system. So a little bit of a focus on the economy behind this. Song Dynasty now going to be coming through for... Demo. Now, this is going to be a quick Song Dynasty. You can see the age ups coming through. Four minutes, 27. So that's fine. The first landmark. The second landmark, though, look at the speed that he's using here. The haste that he's got. Five villagers on this landmark means that that Song Dynasty is going to be coming in a little bit shy of five minutes, which is definitely in my books a good timing on that Song Dynasty. Now, the question is going to be, what does he look to do after that? Does he think about going into the second TC? Does he look to play some Jukunu? It's going to be one of those two options normally. Up against... A civilization like the Byzantines, 
It's very much a game of reaction. You want to see exactly what they're up to. And we'll ride on board with Demu as he begins to circle the base of his opponent. Song Dynasty online a little bit after the five minute mark. Expect to see Imperial officials coming out and it looks like it will be that second TC. What has he spotted inside the base that he's happy with? Is it perhaps the fact that he's gone into the Grand Winery? And that's the reason why he thinks he can get away with going for the second TC? We'll have to wait and see. But meanwhile on the south, have a look at this. Rather, on the, on the north, have a look at this inside the base of Balu. Something very interesting, and it's going to be javelin throwers. I love this. I think this is so smart, because it, what it does is it buys Balu space in the early game. And you might look at that and think, okay, but Jongo, but in, in the late game, this is going to be useless. Well, it might be useless in, in high numbers, but... The good, the good thing about the Mercenary House is there's never really a stage of the game where you've got a lot of these tier one units, so with the exception of maybe the English, where you do often spend quite a bit of investment going into more longbows, just because it's such a great unit in mass. But I find with the Mercenary House, it's just about throwing in just a handful of javelin throwers every now and then, just to mix into your army. They help out a huge amount against Yukonu, help out a huge amount against crossbows. And of course, if you can build up that mass in early Castle Age, they can be very, very potent. Because once they get those plus two ranged armor upgrades, it means things like the Yukonu are not going to be doing a lot of damage. But we'll ride on board now with Balu and see how he's doing. Is it he's going to be Lament and I that he moves into? So Lament and I together with that javelin thrower. So a really nice combo here. Now the scout is on the backside. He has spotted out the mining camp on the stone. So he will know that a second TC is in play for Demu. Now this is a pretty late second TC when it comes to benchmarks. Normally 610 is what you're looking at for a Chinese second TC together with the Song Dynasty. Now, the caveat here is that he's gone for the early village. Now, normally, if you go for that quick second town center with the, the, the uh, quick um, Song Dynasty, you're not going into that village. And the reason why is you just don't need to. Uh, you can simply just rely. Uh, it, it, it's quite a bit of a, a fork out. I think you're paying, what, 125 wood, uh, when realistically, you only really need to spend the first 50 wood on that uh, on that house uh, to be able to guarantee it. Uh, but uh, Lamet and I now coming through. Let's see if Demo, how quick he reacts to this Lament and I. It comes through. He's got a little bit of gold in the bank, so enough to get his upgrades through. Second Town Center coming down. Seven minutes, 20. Demo? Demo? He, he, does, he does react. It's only at the last second, though. He wanted every little bit of gold that he could get right there. I respect the grind. I respect the hustle right there. Unfortunately, though, he does have a, a villager that's quite low health, so it means even a scout uh, will be able to come through and snipe it off if he's not paying attention. So he'll have to be very careful, not to mention the fact we do have javelins on the way now. How much does Demu know about this? Well, he does have the Barbican in the middle of the map, but as you can see, it looks like it's not going to pick up a whole bunch of line of sight. And have a look at this. Lament and I, underneath the town centers, will look to try and stop a couple of villagers, but not going to be able to find it. He's got that ranged, that little ranged uh, shield thrown up for himself at the moment. Now the Javelin's going to start teeing off. And this is going to be an extra juicy combination here up against the Chinese. Feels really good playing these Javelin Thrower early because it just means the Zhukunu are going to have such a hard time. But now we do see Arislitz coming through. Demu's got a couple of ways that he can play it from here. Number one, he can look to throw down a couple more outposts. He will need to find a secondary gold source though, and that will be difficult. So he could look to take this gold on the top side, throw down two outposts, but then you run at the risk of if your opponent does find that gold, they will kill the villagers because they will camp those villagers, they will bring battering rams, and they're going to make your life a misery. On the other side of the map, though, Balu is not thinking about going for a second town center. Instead, the Hyrusophon is down. The Hyrusophon will look to siege down this outpost. And that will hopefully secure passage to that heart of the Chinese base. The response immediately from Demo is going to be barracks. Of all things, it's going to be triple barracks. He's going for Imperial, or for uh, Castle Age, rather. It, that, that's got to be the only thing he's thinking right now. Surely this is not for triple spears. Or is it for triple spears? Has he realized if... Now, this is quite smart from Demu. If he goes into Zhukunu, the Lament and I throw up their shield wall. They're taking 40% less damage on top of the plus one armor that they're about to... or that they've got. If you go for Zhukunu against the Javelin Throwers, they've already got four armor. Now, Zhukunu would do very well against the Hybrosophon because they can deal with it at range. But the reality is, you're going to be having a tough time against these units. So maybe going for the spears here could actually be a really smart play. I figured that he was just going to go to Castle Age and that these are all for, for the inevitable 
um, the in inevitable palace guards that we would see. But it's not the case. He's not going to be able to get there. The pressure's already on. Villagers will move to the top side, but it's not going to be for gold. Instead, going to be for the mill up here. Hopefully, he brings an imperial official. When you take this many villagers in the direction of a hunt like this, throwing down a... Uh, uh, making sure you've got an imperial official there is just so important. It's an extra 20% food. And when you're talking about 2350 food, it's able to push that to, you know, 20, 2800. I think it works out to be 20, 2900. It's a lot of food. Maybe not that much. Maybe, yeah, 2800, somewhere around that region. But now, the Imperial Academy is under pressure. Keep in mind, the second landmark is in the center. Have a look at this. Look at Demo. Moving to the opponent's side of the map. But behind this, a single Lamentani looks, knows something is up. Balu, he's aware that this hunt has been taken. There's only four deer here. So it would mean there has to be a hunt taken. And indeed, he spots it. Immediately becomes aware of it. All units to the deer hunt. And indeed, it is no longer a deer hunt, ladies and gentlemen. It is now a spear hunt. The spears are on the hunt. The Lament and I pulling out all the stops. Looking to try and defend Demu. He's now going to be on the run as the villagers hand in. Making sure they've got their, their one hand in before they go. The mill's got 80 tacks in it ready to roll. The Imperial official, unfortunately, going to get caught out of position. Now, the one, the one saving grace here that Demu's got is that by having these villagers out on the map, it's actually freed up his base. So that means now he's going to be able to very easily come back in and retake this position with his spears. Because the fortification is not through on these outposts, which means you're going to be doing full fire damage. So Demu does a nice little bit of a loop-de-loo and manages to clean up everything back home. This is... <laughs> look at this, the Kyrosophon firing off at the spears. Not really. It's, he's hitting the, the, uh, the mining camp, but he's going to be able to get these outposts taken down for free fortification is coming through now have a look at this okay zero versus fire that's what i want you to look at with this upgrade coming through it would be plus five against fire but guess what there's no upgrade anymore because the outpost is dead he held the upgrade for too long and it meant at the end of the day he wasn't able to get it down had he gotten those upgrades down probably would have bought him the time to actually get back down into position so Demu, when it comes to this game of chess, my friend, you have just secured yourself a very nice early check. Let's see if he can find mate, though, as he continues playing on into the game with the early spear spam. I gotta be honest, I did not expect this as the counter to the javelin Lament and I combo, but I, I, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with it. A jumps come through on the other side. It's going to be the Golden Horn Tower. No real surprise there. Definitely considered to be the, the ultimate age three landmark for the Byzantines. Now, the question is going to be, which tech direction does Balu go into? And the answer is very clear. It's going to be Varangian Guard. Immediately throws four Varangian Guard into Q. He's looking good. He's looking really good early on at this 13 minute mark. The one thing to note though, the scaling difference is what we need to be aware of. Demu is on two TCs. Balu is only on the one. That is a big difference. And these are not just any ordinary two TCs. These are Chinese TCs. So in my mind, at this stage of the game, if Balu doesn't win in the next seven or eight minutes or cause significant economic damage, it is almost certainly a victory for the Chinese. And at this stage, all, all Demu wants to do is he wants to get to Castle Age, throw down a single archery range, Supervise it. Start making some crossbows uh, together with a Nesta B, and he is just in such a good position. The question is going to be about whether he can get there, though. You can see that Balu is looking to try and spot this fight. Demu doesn't want it, though. Demu really doesn't want it. He's got villages on gold in the middle of the map. That's where he's going to opt to gather that gold from. Definitely the right call. Next to his Barbican, he should be relatively safe. Varangian Guard are coming through. And remember, the Var Varangian Guard, compared to the Men at Arms, actually get more, more uh, melee armor. Then the men at arms. Clock tower through now. Nice safe position towards that top side of the base. Kyrosophon. Now coming through. A little bit of a burp there from me. It was, it was, I don't know if it was a burp. It was like a kind of a hiccup. Do you ever get these one-off hiccups? What are they called? There's got to be a name for that. You know how science has got a name for everything? No, actually, science doesn't have a name for, for everything. The Germans have a name for everything. Dude, you guys have got, like, Schadenfraud. It's just a great example of, like, uh, something that you just have a word for. It's impressive. And I'm pretty sure it's just, like, they just amalgamate two words and just put them together. They're like, blue dress. Look at that. We got, we got a word for blue dresses. It's just blue dress. And they just say blue dress. Unfortunately, 
One of the Imperial officials will go down. Villagers managing to make their way away have picked up their textiles. It means that a couple of them survive. And look how quick he is out of there. Really, really looking to push the pedal to the metal. Kyrosophant back here. Plenty of spears looking to pick up the incoming Byzantine army. He's found plenty of units and villagers now on that top side. Will look to try and take the Lamentonite down. More and more units. He's going to look to try and siege the clock tower down of all things. Good luck to him. Clock tower, of course, a very important landmark. And have a look at this. He's just throwing down more barracks. He doesn't even want the archery range. He says, I don't even need crossbows. Drongo, if I make crossbows, he's already got... Uh, he's already got the jab from throwers out, so he's just going to one-shot my crossbows anyway, and that's a great point demo. I hadn't even considered that, so very well played. He's just going to look to try and commit it over at this stage of the game to palace guards, I guess, is the go for him. So it's going to be palace guard v Varangian guard. Two guard units, two men at arm replacements, two unique units. Spearman on the front. Yet to pick up their plus two melee armor. You can see ranged armor is going to be coming through for demo now. Landmark under pressure. He's fighting his way out of this position. But he will have to lose a landmark for it in the meantime. Harden Lamed and I. Veteran Javelin Throw. Plenty of damage coming through. I would have loved to have seen just a single nest of bees. And I know that Demu would have as well. So that, I can tell you right now, that's exactly why Balu went for it. Now Demu's got to make the choice. Do I repair this landmark or do I throw down a siege workshop? And that is not a, not a very clear choice. Spears coming in though. They're going to be met with the Varangian Guard. On the backside, the Veteran Javelin Throwers just teeing off. Keep in mind, they do a fair bit of damage, but not quite enough to one-shot the palace guards. It is going to be enough to one-shot the spears, though. And now those palace guards, you can see they will make a connection on that backside. He's looking to mass up those melee units. And now doing a pretty decent job, Balu, with that micro. He's still maintaining a strong lead throughout this game when it comes to the military numbers. And keep in mind, village account still not looking the hottest for Demu. He's struggling with food. Look at this. Double town center, both of them idle. Both town centers idle. Only one villager in the town center queue now. That is how difficult it is for Demu. 712 food a minute. And this is why losing that astronomical clock tower was so significant. Because have a look at the resources in the bank for him. It's beautiful. It, it stacks up so well with going into that kind of unit. Because all the villagers need to be... Well, you want to be spending all your food on villagers, right? And then all of your wood, all your gold, you just throw it on the clock tower. It's really easy to get wood. It's right here. It's right here. It's really easy to get gold. It's under my barbican. But food is the hard one. Where do I get food from? Well, I can get a little bit out here. I can get a little bit up here. But it, that's risky. It's risky business. Meanwhile, Balu on the other side of the map has thrown down that second town center. And it means that the trajectory for Demu is not going to be that... that, that you know, to the moon trajectory anymore. I mean, he's still going to be on that trajectory. It's just that it's going to be accompanied by a guy that's going to the stars. Uh, so that is uh, something to consider. Balu is now on a pretty good pace with Demu. And it's just been nonstop pressure. Couple camels now coming out. Why the hell not? Not a bad idea. Still no repairs coming in on the clock tower. Could look to go into that siege workshop instead, but doesn't even do it. We will get those archery ranges up in for crossbows, but you've got to remember that the javelin throwers are out. He's still got 20 javelin throwers out on the field, so it means that every crossbow is just going to be killed very quickly. And now, a little bit of a counter-attack on the other side of the map as Demu says, well, hold on, Drongo. I'm not quite done yet. It might not look good for me. I might not look my prettiest, my sharpest, my hairiest, but I'm still going to try and pull back this victory. And look at this. Look at this. We got Varangian guards coming to interrupt individual Varangian guards coming out to interrupt villagers now. Remember, they got... Oh, God, that's a lot of Varangian guards. They've got that extra melee armor against the villagers. Couple of camels now over on that west side. More Kyrosophons now coming out. Action all over this map, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to keep up with it. I'm trying my hardest palace guards to come out to meet them. I don't think Demi realizes the villagers on the north, and I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't because he is just under pressure everywhere. It is starting to get really, really scary because Balu has overtaken him on the village account. 22 workers taken out so far. He does eventually realize only three of them making it out alive. Camels get chased away, but more reinforcements now coming in onto that western position. He's fully surrounded over on that east side. The rest of the army does get cleaned up and Balu looking strong. Unfortunately, loses the Chiral Savant in the base. Relic's getting picked up for Demu. Is this what he needs to get back into the game? He's on three relics, or at least he's on one relic with two in the bag at the moment. Javelin throwers, teeing off, crossbows, struggling. And now, he's looked to bring those crossbows to the top side. Villagers once again running that circle around. You can see he's got palace guards 
Plenty of units on board, but they're just splintered everywhere. And now more and more production. What could, honestly, what could have Demu done differently this game? I really don't know. The 2TC was almost necessary. Especially after you see the Grand Winery. It's almost like, yeah, okay, I can go Grand Winery. Oh, he's going Grand Winery, not the Hippodrome. I'm not going to be pressured too much early. I can get away with the second TC. Was it just the fact that he kind of delayed the second TC a little bit? It, it, it felt a, about a minute too late. And was that, was that the deal? Was it maybe the lack of farm transition? Maybe. But even then, it, you're playing the Chinese. Farm transitions are hard. Perhaps he could have looked for a Barbican in a little bit of a better spot, you know, over here. Uh, go for the Barbican. Guarantee that food income for a little bit. Maybe that was the play. But now it starts to feel like it's fading away for Demo. He's lost the economic lead. The military lead. He never really had it. It was always in favor of Balu. And now Balu is up double the military. Significant economic uh, economic uh, advantage. Those three relics that Demo had, well, unfortunately, he's down to one. One of them going to be dropped on the ground. The second one out here as well. Which means that Balu, on this top side, will just simply be able to train a monk or two. Get him over. He's already got one in the bag. Second one is coming back now. Where is it? It's on this top side. He's looking to bring it into the Grand Winery by the looks of it. Indeed he is. Pick up a little bit of extra olive oil. And now that landmark did finally fall. So two landmarks down so far for Demu. He's got to be careful because the third landmark is... That's pretty much a gimme. It's just that final town center that's going to be really the difficult one to get. Palace Guard numbers are building, though. Now the question becomes Palace Guard versus Varangian Guard. 7 armor, 13 attack against 5 armor, and 14 attack. A little bit more health on the Palace Guards. A little bit more speed on the Palace Guards. But you've got to be careful about the Varangian Guard because they hit one button and they start moving real quick. And now back, Demu looks to push onto his opponent's side. You can see just how effective these javelin throwers are. Picking off the crossbows. And it really makes you think, how do you deal with this combination. How do you deal with Varangian Guard Javelin Thrower? You can't make... Is it Knight? You can't... It, a Knight's the answer. Maybe Knight's are the answer. But then all of a sudden, you just mix in a couple of Spears, or Lament and I in this case, and it gets really hard. Is, is that the... Is that the answer? Do you go lots of Archers with Knights? Maybe that could be the play. But you can't make Archers if you're the Juicy Legacy. Fortunately, he's playing the Chinese. He does have access to the Archer. And the Archer could take out the Lament Knight, but the Lament Knight has got the extra... Oh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Siege Workshop. This is the right call. Siege Workshop. Immediately looking to supervise it up. Get out those nest of bees. And you could see how important it was. How pivotal losing this astronomical clock tower was. And it just makes you think. Had you just deleted the Lumber Camp here? You had the second one up. You could have just thrown the clock tower right here. Probably still quite exposed, though. But probably would still be alive. You'd be on, what, two, three, four nest of bees at this stage of the game? It's one of those little things that in the scheme of things, can make a big difference over time. Second nest of bees is out. A little bit of a raid over towards this east side. And have a look, Varangian guards dropping their guard. But now going to be dealing plenty of damage. You can see just how quickly they got taken out by the crossbows. Middle of the map, the third landmark's taken down. We've got a fourth landmark still alive. And Demu, he's looking to repair this one on the backside. Should probably find it. It's at 90% 90, 90 at the moment. Now more and more units on that front. Look at this size of the army coming out from Balu. This is impressive. 49 Varangian guards. We are finding a new composition. I'm going to be honest. Like This composition coming out from Balu is kind of crazy. He has played the Byzantines perfectly. Were the Byzantine buffs too much? I mean, and I will just say that Demo is a very good Chinese player. He was He's probably one of the best. He's up there. Like I would say Beastie number one, and then Demo probably number two. He is a very good Chinese player. So he, he knows every little bit bit of this civilization, but it just felt like Balu's had his number on every single equation. That, that, hey, come on. You, you guys have got to give me some... You got to give me some credit for that one. That was good. Because normally you'd say he had his number on every single, you know, situation or something like that. But that was equation, number. You get, you get it? You get it anyway. We're about to get it. Have a look at this. Demu is looking to try and take the fight. Nesta Beast off the back. Getting a couple little shots in. Watch out for the Varangian guard. They might look to run past. Indeed, they will. A little bit of a block coming through. Manages to find it. The gold mine's going to help out a little bit. Nesta B still dishing out damage. But look at the number of units on this front side. The horde is alive, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, it's no longer a Zerg horde. It is a Byzantine horde. And the numbers.
numbers are incredible. Look at the javelin throwers. I can't believe how many he's got. Firing off into the center of the mass. It's not even going to matter. The nest of bees get cleaned up completely. And Demu, he is struggling to keep himself in this game. His head is no longer above the water. Oh, my Lord. Things are looking good for Balu. Right on board with him. Is he thinking about Imperial? He's thinking, he's thinking about Imperial Age. It's the foreign engineering company, ladies and gentlemen. Going down in the back of the base. Demu under pressure. 70. This is all over Red Rover. Imperial Age. Economic advantage. Tech advantage. Military advantage. Demu, unfortunately, will be tapping out shortly. I'm confident when he sees the Imperial Age, it's just going to be like, he will just throw in the towel. He normally fights it out to the end, but I think even he knows that it won't even matter. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your company today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this game. Definitely felt a little bit one-sided, but Demu fought his hardest. Unfortunately, in the end, though, the Byzantines able to overcome them. Go check him out. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can catch him live. And of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.